We continue in South Africa where the police in Western Cape are investigating a mass shooting that occurred in Gugulethu on Saturday night. Police spokesperson Andre Trout, four men and a woman were shot dead while they were sitting in their cars. The dead office is uh, police uh, deputy minister Kassil Mathale's close protector. Now, according to police spokesperson Brigadier Atlenda Math, now, uh, Macrail has been Mathale's close uh, guardian since 2019 and is a member of the Western Cape's Protection and Security Services Division. She urged the public to assist the police with information that will lead to the arrest of the perpetrators behind the mass shooting. Now, due to the rising gang-related violence and student strife, a teaching and learning at several schools in the northern pass of Gabaha, Western Cape, are becoming more challenging. These gang-invested neighborhoods' inhabitants claim to be constantly in danger for learners following recent shooting that killed five people. Five individuals were shot and killed in the residents during the most recent event, which happened less than a week ago. Now, education activist uh, Hendrik uh, Makanaka uh, joins us uh, to discuss on this particular uh, development. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much indeed. Let me also good the listeners. All right, great. Now, can you shed some light on the extent of the issue uh, of gangsterism in schools and communities, particularly in the Western Cape? Gangsterism in South African schools is very rife, uh, particularly in the Western Cape. And you will remember that learners are members of communities, and therefore whatever they bring into schools comes from communities. So if you look at the Cape Flat in the Western Cape, that is where the gangsters are found, and uh, even our learners. You know, men this uh, gangsterism tendencies in communities, and they are able to bring them into schools, which really are able to disrupt uh, learning and teaching. And for us as activists in the terrain, that is a cause for great concern. Now, how does the presence of gangs uh, impact uh, learners' uh, daily lives and their ability to actually focus on their studies? Well, the reality is that every parent wants to, they want to see their children get ahead in life. And therefore, the issue of gangsterism makes it difficult for learners to progress uh, smoothly. That is why at some point you find that uh, the system finds itself with a dropout rate uh, within the education system, where some of the learners are, are not able to to complete their grades due to, you know, issues such as cancerism, uh, you know, other issues such as socioeconomic issues, uh, such as poverty, as well as inequality as well. And so we are sitting with a huge problem because if these learners cannot con con uh, continue with uh, their education, then at least we are building future criminals who may become a problem in society. Now, in your opinion, what specific actions uh, would you say education authorities can take to address the issue of gangsterism and, of course, uh, 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 the acts of violence that we see across? I think the government alone will not be able to resolve the issue of uh, gangsterism and generally crime in the country. So there's a need for collaboration uh, between the police and communities. Uh, with a view to make sure that even parents are involved. Let's remember that these learners, as I said, they come from communities. They are our children. And therefore, we as parents have to be take an active role uh, to make sure that we assist a government. It cannot help anybody for us as parents uh, to shield uh, criminals. If I, I live with a criminal in the household, it, it is not in the interest of society for me to protect uh, my child who is a criminal. I must find a way uh, to ensure that I report such matters to authorities with a view to, you know, to get rid of, uh, you know, crime in our communities. Remember, even our, our prisons, they are actually not uh, there to punish uh, these children, but to, to actually 
you know, correct them. Uh, so we have a duty as society to correct these young people so that they can, can come back uh, to the society and make a meaningful contribution. Uh, to society. All right. Now, before I let you go, how can schools and communities work together to create safer and more supportive environments for learners? And what educational programs or interventions uh, that have, you know, proven effective in empowering learners and also reducing uh, their vulnerability to gang influences? Well, uh, we currently have uh, school governing bodies, particularly in public schools. Uh, you, you remember that South Africa is divided into two. Uh, we have got uh, private education as well as uh, uh, public, you know, public schools. And the issue of gangsterism uh, is found in the main in public schools. That is why we believe that uh, there must be greater collaboration between uh, society and schools. In other words, it takes, uh, you know, a triangle. You know, education on its own is a triangle, which requires the collaboration of parents, learners, and teachers. So we need to work together to create a safe environment which is conducive for learning and teaching so that our learners can be able to create a future for themselves. Thank you so much for your time, Hendricks.